Hello viewers, welcome to my channel. I am Hashim Ali Khan. So now I am continuing the problem, 17th problem on computation of tax liability. So far 16 problems I have completed till the last video. In those videos I have explained you how to compute the tax liability, the different rates of tax lab system, then flat rates for casual income, special incomes and how to charge the surcharge and tax rebate under section 87A. So different uh, types of problems I have solved in the last two videos. So if you have not watched the earlier videos, I suggest you to go to the playlist of my channel. Select the subject advanced aspects of income tax. Watch the first video. I have explained you in detail regarding the provisions of how to compute the income from other sources and how to compute the tax liability. So before starting the next problem, 17th problem, I expect my viewers to have a printout of the problems which I have given in the link under my description. So take a printout, keep it ready and start watching the problem. First take the screenshot of the solution of problem 17, 18, 19, 20. Then I will explain each and every point of these problems. Come on, see the 17th, 17th problem. During the previous year relevant to the current assessment year in college annual day function, as a student of your college, you have received the following. Calculate tax liability for each of the receipt and comment upon the same on the assumption that your income from other heads are 5,20,000. You are a student. Assume that you are a student and in the college annual day function, you have received some different types of prizes. Then what is the treatment of these prizes which you receive on the annual day function in your college? So how to compute the tax liability? Assuming that your other incomes are 5,20,000. The first situation, best student cash prize 1,50,000. First case, see here. Best, prize, best student prize of 1,50,000. So Income Tax Act says if an SSC has received the best student price, it will be taxable under the head income from other sources. So best student price when a person receives that is taxable under income from other sources. The price amount is 1,50,000 and income under other heads are 5,20,000. The so total income will be 6,70,000. Now we have to compute the tax on 6,70,000 normal income. So on normal income we apply slab rates. The slab first 2,50,000 nil. Next 2,50,000 1 to 5 lakh rupees. 2,50,000 income 5%. 12,500. Next slab goes from to 5 lakh 1 to 10 lakh. But our income is not going up to 10 lakh. So I am taking the balance. So 6,70,000 minus 5 lakh, so 1,70,000 balance, 20%, 34,000. So total 6, 46,500 is a tax on normal income. Surcharge will not be applied because the income is less than 50 lakh. Then health and education says 4%, tax liability 48,360. The first situation we have completed where the student received best student price. It is taxable under income from other sources. Second, lucky student uh, in a lucky dip price. <coughs> lucky student in a lucky dip price. When he got lucky dip price, Income Tax Act says it is a casual income. And casual income is taxed at 30% flat separately. <coughs> The casual income will not be included in normal income. We have to keep separate normal income and casual income. So first we calculate the tax on normal income of 5,20,000. Under other heads 5,20,000. So normal income slab 2,50,000 nil. 2,50,000 1 to 5 lakh. 2,50,000 5%. 12,500. Now the balance. Normal income is 5,20,000. Out of 5,20,000 5 lakh over. So 20,000 20% 20 4,000. So total tax 16,500. 
16,500 is the tax on normal income. Now tax on casual income, this lucky dip price is a casual income. So it is taxed at a flat rate of 30%. So 30% of 150,000, 45,000. Take the total 61, find it. Health and education says 2,460. So tax liability is 63,960. Second case over. Now third case is best single price 1,50,000. If the student got best single price, now two situations will arise. If he is professionally a single, then that prize money will be treated as income from profession. If it is not his profession, just he has won the prize as a best singer, then it will be taxable under income from other sources. Whether it is taxable under income from profession or it is taxable under income from other sources, in both cases it's a normal income. Whether you treat it as income from other source or whether you treat it as income from profession because we don't know whether he is a professional singer or a non-professional singer if professional singer income from profession non-professional singer income from other source in both cases it is in normal income so we club it into normal income the so normal income is 5,20,000 and this single price is 1,50,000 so total income will be 6,70,000 when the total income is 6,70,000, the tax liability is 48,360. So here also 48,360. Right? Last one. Merit scholarship received. So Income Tax Act says if a student receives merit scholarship, then that is fully exempted from tax. The merit scholarship is fully exempted from tax. That's it. So this is the end of problem number 17. Now I am coming to problem number 18. As a member of a team, father and son participated in KBC program. Kaun Banega Karodapati. As a member of a team, father and son participated in a KBC program conducted by TV channel and won rupees 8 crore prize. Calculate tax liability if the prize money is shared equally. The Income Tax Act says when the prize money is shared by father and son equally, then 4 crore is taxable in the hands of father and in the hands of son equally. That means 4 crore in the hands of father is taxable and 4 crore in the hands of son is taxable separately. That is the provision of Income Tax Act. Now how, how what is the tax liability on 4 crore rupees? See, father and son participated as a member of team, hence the prize will be distributed equally, 4 crore each. This income is a casual income and each one's income is taxed separately at a flat rate of 30%. So casual income tax is 30%. So tax on casual income, 30% of 4 crore. 4 crore, 30%, 1 crore, 20 lakh. Subcharge. Subcharge will be at the rate of 25% because the income is more than 2 lakh but less than 5 lakh. It is less than 5 lakh. No, 5 crore, sorry, 5 crore. The surcharge rates, I will repeat again. No surcharge is applicable if the total income is up to 50 lakh. Up to 50 lakh rupees total income, no surcharge. Over 50 lakh, but up to 1 crore, 10% is the surcharge. Over 1 crore, up to 2 crore, 15% is the surcharge. Over 2 crore, up to 5 crore, 25% is the surcharge. Over 5 crore, 37% is the rate of surcharge. Now, our case is five, uh, 4 crore. 4 crore means it is more than 2 crore, but less than 5 crore. So the surcharge rate is 25%. So here 25% of 1 crore, 20 lakh, 30 lakh. So 1 crore, 50 lakh. Health and education says 4% 6 lakh. So 1 crore 56 lakh is the tax liability in the hands of father and also in the hands of son. Equal. Next, 19th. Sri Nadham, an Indian citizen 
but non resident for the previous year 2021 relevant to the assessment year 21 22 during his stay in india he won a lottery prize of 5.3 crore income tax access winning from lottery is a casual income which is taxed at a flat rate of 30 percent whether the ssc is a resident or non-resident it is equally applicable no difference if the ssc is a non-resident same 30 percent tax he has to pay in india so even the non-resident individual are taxed 30 percent cash the lottery price amount 5 crore 30 lakh so tax on casual income 30 percent of 5 crore 30 lakh 1 crore 59 lakh no surcharge the total income is more than 5 crore the rate of surcharge is 37 percent so 37 percent of 1 crore 59 58 lakh 83,000 add up 2 crore 17 lakh 83,000 to this add 4 percent health and education says 8 lakh 71 300 finally the tax liability is 2 crore 26 lakh 54,320 that's it next problem 20th calculate tax liability of a person on total income of 15 lakh advance tax paid 2 lakh this advance tax paid will be deducted after calculating tax liability after calculating tax liability deduct the advance tax in the following situation three separate situations are given the first if the ssc is a resident male person of less than 60 years first of all a resident male or female does not make any difference because income tax point of view the same provisions are applicable for male as well as female less than 60 years means non-senior citizen for non-senior citizen basic exemption limit is 2 lakh 50 thousand total income 15 lakh advance tax paid 2 lakh resident male less than 60 years non-senior up to 2 lakh 50 thousand nil 2 lakh 50 thousand 1 to 5 lakh 2 lakh 50 thousand 5 percent 12 thousand 500 5 lakh 1 to 10 lakh 5 lakh is the income 20 percent 1 lakh now balance total is 15 lakh from 15 lakh deduct the three amounts the balancing figure is 5 lakh 20 per 30 percent of 5 lakh 1 lakh 50 thousand the tax is 2 lakh 62 thousand 500 is the tax on total income to this we add surcharge no, no surcharge is there because the total income is less than 50 lakh there is no surcharge directly we add health and education says health and education says 4 percent 10,500 so 2 lakh 73,000 is the tax liability from this tax liability deduct the advance tax paid by the SSC advance tax paid 2 lakh deduct 2 lakh 73,000 is the tax due that's it now case 2 if the SSC is a resident female person of 68 years male or female does not make any difference resident and 68 years means senior citizen for senior citizen the basic exemption limit is 3 lakhs that is the only difference the slab up to 3 lakh rupees 3 lakh nil 3 lakh 1 to 5 lakh 2 lakh rupees income 5 percent tax 10,000 5 lakh 1 to 10 lakh 5 lakh rupees 20 percent 1 lakh the balance balance is 5 lakh rupees 30 percent 1 lakh 50 thousand so tax on total income is 2 lakh 60 thousand to 2 lakh 60 thousand add up the health and education says 4 percent 10,400 2 lakh 70,400 is the tax liability from this deduct the advance tax paid 2 lakh the ultimately tax due is 70,400 that's it second case completed third case if the SSC is non-resident and super senior citizen the SSC is a non-resident uh, non for non-resident SSCs the basic exemption limit is the same 2,50,000 for non-senior, senior or super senior. For any type of SSC, the basic exemption limit is 2,50,000 for non-resident persons. So here 
the SC is a non-resident does not make any difference for super senior senior or non-senior leave it because for every SSC 2,50,000 so when the basic exemption limit is 2,50,000 the tax liability already we have calculated in a case that is 73,000 same 73,000 will apply if the SSC is a non-resident super senior the same tax liability of 73,000 as that of a because the basic exemption limit is 2,50,000 that's it so this is the end of problem number 20 so totally 20 problems have completed on computation of tax liability I have explained each and every point in detail so if you are continuously watching successively one video with the other then definitely now you are more confident in solving the problem on how to compute the tax liability so inshallah the next problem will continue in the next video but I want to inform you that I have started a new channel by name Hans Accounting Institute visit my new channel second channel that channel I have made mainly for IGCSC particularly for IGCSC students of Cambridge and Edexcel even anybody can visit anybody can watch the video and enhance the knowledge so my request visit the second channel Hans Accounting Institute and subscribe that channel too inshallah we'll continue the next problem in the next video